after I graduated high school, I had it in my mind I was gonna go to San Francisco and become a fashion designer. And that did not happen. <laughs> My name is Markale McWilliams, and I turn wool into yarn. You might say that turning wool into yarn is the fabric of Markale McWilliams' life, and it's a passion she loves to share. Why don't you guys come on in? For Markale, working with wool was a seed that was planted early on. Actually, I want to take that out. I remember coming to what was Yolo Wool Mill as a small child, I think maybe six years old. And all I really remember is being in the barn and she had wool stacked from floor to ceiling, just bales and bales of wool. And it just was like, whoa, that's a lot of wool. <laughs> After I graduated high school, I did attend California College of the Arts, but I did not major in fashion, I majored in textiles. Basically at the end of the class I was like, well I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> Needing to figure things out, Markale joined a volunteer farming program where she traveled the world working on farms in exchange for room and board. After returning to Woodland three years later, a family friend suggested she revisit the old Yolo wool mill. So I came here and I met with Jane, who was the owner at that time, and I got really excited and was just like, do you take interns or apprentices or volunteers? She was like, well, I have a paid position if you want it. And yeah, I wanted it. So I started working here and worked here for about seven years. <laughs> Jane eventually retired, which opened the door for Markale to start her own business in 2017. So I've got Jacob Wool here. Great, okay, great, okay, yeah, I'll help you bring them in. My average customer, it's typically women that have their own sheep. Yeah. Yeah, well, in black and white, I sorted the white into one bag, and then the right. other is the mixed colors. Good. I can process as little as one to two sheep depending on the breed and how much wool they yield. But I have people that have up to like 100 sheep sometimes. Enough. So this will all blend to gray. Right. Cool. Yeah, okay. Let me weigh that up. She definitely knows her limitations for what kinds of fiber she can take, what kinds of products she can produce. And so she wants to let the customer know that and not take on something that isn't going to make anybody happy. Because I think what I'm going to do is, is skein them how I learned last weekend to yeah. present it for a sale product. Okay. And while customer satisfaction is always her number one priority, Markel admits running a business of this size by herself can sometimes get a little overwhelming. This is a one-woman operation, so I'm doing everything myself. I answer every email, I answer every phone call, try and be on time <laughs> with phone calls, but um, yeah, I do everything from opening to closing. One of the things that's been the hardest is just finding help with these machines. This machinery is as old as 80 years old, and so things break down, it does happen, and then I have to fix it. So I feel like Rosie the Riveter, I just pick up a wrench, I'm like, we can do it, this is what we gotta do. Starting any business requires dedication and sacrifice. Markale has already proven to her customers she has the chops to make Valley Oak Wool Mill a success. What Markale does takes a lot of business sense, a lot of mechanical ability, and knowledge of the fiber. So it's not a low-level job. There's a lot of skill and knowledge involved in it. Every small business is going to be hard in the beginning. I think it's going to be hard for maybe even a number of years. It is my desire to grow the business. Eventually I'll have to hire somebody and I know that's expensive. I don't know how God's going to work that out, but it's going to happen. I know that and I'm trusting in that. <laughs>